Jams, jams, jams. Picture books and jams. Welcome, everybody, to PB Jams. Good morning or afternoon, whenever it is that you guys are joining us. We are so happy that you are here for this episode of PB Jams. I'm here with Molly, and I forgot to ask you, is it Rattan? How yes. Do you yes, Rattan. Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, and she is the author of Something Wild, which has lots of great musical connections. It's a beautiful book. And Molly, thank you for being here today with us. Thank you for having me. I'm just so, I'm thrilled to be here. It's a beautiful, beautiful book. I loved it. And, and before, when I was talking with Molly before, um, I didn't realize at first that she wrote and illustrated. And I was asking her about these beautiful illustrations because they're absolutely gorgeous. So not only did she write this story, but she illustrated as well. And we're going to talk a little bit later about that process. But what I want to start with, Molly, is I know that you were a musician in a former life, maybe kind of, sort of. And I'm just curious how you went from being a musician in a band to writing kids books. So talk to us a minute about that. Well, um, actually, I, there hasn't ever really been a transition um, okay. from the time I was really um, little. I did both. I have always um loved music and I've always loved to draw as a kid. Um, and I, when I was in second grade, uh, my mom signed me up for violin lessons. Oh. And so the, um, which of course I didn't continue with because the recitals were too much for me to handle. <laughs> I was too scared to perform as a kid. Um, but um, I did start playing drums when I was a teenager and joined bands. And so the stage fright didn't prevent me from pursuing music because I just love the music. And I actually, you know, I love the music and I love being in bands. And meanwhile, I was just drawing the whole time. So the, the two talents came in, I've always, um, done the posters for the bands and drawn d illustrated the you know the, the covers and I've done a lot of paintings for my the band Fido that I was in the most recently and so the, the two have always been very intertwined um and I did neither professionally okay. <laughs> like like really professionally I um I was working, I, I sort of was, had success with both, but um, I was working as an art director for magazines for most of my uh, career um, before I did this. <laughs> um, and that was what I gave up. That was the real transition, was going from being a graphic designer to being an illustrator. Um, the music just stayed consistent in the background because it was always something that I just did for fun and for, you know, for pleasure and for social, the social, you know, all the things. I, all I the just things. have always, always loved doing the music. So the what really stopped me from doing music is the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Actually, I haven't done a lot of music in the last three or four years because we had a big concert that was canceled and then things have just been shut down and um you know I've continued singing in a choir but even that stopped for a long time gotcha so that is really so I'm currently not really involved with any musical projects but it's because of the pandemic not because I've been illustrating gotcha gotcha so, so they're both still full force in your life and still big priorities <laughs> in both ways. Yeah. That's good to know. Yeah, yeah. The the this is way more full force right now because the pandemic didn't didn't stop me from sitting at my computer and, and sitting exactly. in my studio drawing. So um this has been way more of a focus in my life the last few years than the music. Gotcha. It's funny how things wax and wane like that, but I think yeah music and writing both um have in common i think that if we have those things in our soul like we have to do them whether we're 
Like it's, it, it just oozes out of our pores, even if we're not doing it professionally. So when you were saying like music, I just do because it's just who I am and it's what I do and it's what I enjoy. And I think that's probably true for, for many of us in probably all the creative fields, right? Like the drawing, the music, the writing, the dancing, all those things. I think they just come from so much of a place of who we are. And oftentimes if, if I'm talking to people who are, writing and I've heard other authors say this too like if you can stop writing then stop because it's not the thing for you right but if you write because you just have to like I mean even if I'm not writing for kids like I'm always writing I'm I'm writing for me if I'm not writing for anybody yeah. else you know and I think yeah. that's a, a sure sign you know if you're making music for you and nobody else and if you're writing or drawing or dancing for you because it's what you love then that's a, certainly a good inroad to doing it on a more professional level yeah, yeah. you know when um my father-in-law is um was a successful character actor um, mm -hmm. He did a lot of movies and a lot of uh, TV and Shakespeare in the Park in New York, and he had a huge career. Um, and at one point when my daughter was um, in high school, she considered being an actor. And so I, um, I, I asked Donald, I said, hey, you know, she wants to be an actor what do I say? You know, do you have any advice? Yeah. And he said, only tell her to only do it if she's going to die, if she doesn't. Exactly. If she thinks she's going to die, if she doesn't do it, then she's got to do it. And, and I actually um, took that advice for myself. Yeah. I mean, that was what really made me go, okay, I got to do children's books because I'm going to die if I don't do them. You know, yeah. like I had one wanting to do them for so long. And when he said that about my daughter, I was like, that's it. I'm yeah. diving in. I'm going to leave my other career. I'm going to do this instead. And, you know, it was just, you know, but, but it's like that with uh, that kind of, it's like no, remembering who you are and like tapping into who you are. Yes. You know, absolutely. Well, obviously that's going great for you because something wild is here and is beautiful. And I love the writing, I love the illustrations. And of course we love that there's music in it. So you've hinted at it a little bit, but talk to us about what the musical connections are in this story, something wild. Well, um, I chose the violin because, um, you know, my own experience as a kid um, playing the violin. I know a lot of kids play violin when they're, you know, um, when they're, you know, when you're a kid, you're, it's one of the orchestra instruments that you, your parents sign you up to do, which is what happened to me. <laughs> and so in other words, I didn't choose it for myself as a kid. My mom gotcha. signed me up. Yep. And um, so, you know, that's why I chose my character plays the violin. Now, in, in my case, in this, in my character's case, she really loves it. And, you know, I really loved it too. Um, I just was too scared. And so that that's where the roots of this this book comes from the music connection is is me remembering what it was like to to have that recital coming up and being so terrified yeah. and what really um the you know this isn't a musical connection but when i was working on my book uh the stray which was my first my debut um an scdwi um uh, person asked me to, to present at a mingle and it was talking in front of people and and it triggered um, such intense stage fright I was losing sleep and it it made me um, it it the whole stage fright thing came to the forward and I thought I need to write a book about this and I remembered my childhood and I remembered you know, and meanwhile, I was playing a lot, performing a lot with the bands at the time, um, because this was pre pandemic that I wrote the book. Yeah, So I was mad, trying to manage. Um, it's, you know, it's not actually I would I would have to say, like, it's, it's leading up to the performance, that is the hard thing for me. It's the awesome. anticipation. It's getting on stage. It's you know, but when I 
what I was realizing was that once I got on stage, if I had rehearsed and I, I could suddenly, I, I, my muscle memory, like, especially when I was playing drums, the muscle memory would take over the, the, the discipline would take over and I could get my mind, which was like panicking and freaking out. I just had to get out of my own way and, and allow myself to just be present. And I trust my ability to perform. And um, so all of those things sort of were whirling around in my head. And um, I just thought, oh, I need to write a book about this. Yeah. And then meanwhile, I had written, I had drawn a little sequence in, um, in 2014, I had taken a class with Marla Frazee. Uh -huh. And I, um, she asked us to, to draw a sequence. And at the time, I was performing a lot. So I drew this really simple little sequence. It's I, I have a, a picture of it. This is from my portfolio. This was this I put it in a portfolio. So this is my sequence started out. Um, and then it just has a little sequence of a of, of the girl playing violin and then how how wonderful it is when she starts. And I had that in my portfolio for a long time. And I had I had thought you know what happens after she gets on stage where does she go what what happens next in the story and i could never figure out what happened next so i kind of just put it aside and then when i had all of that relapse of anxiety about the speaking engagement which triggered all of the memories of the musical of my stage fright musical stage fright i realized the story was what happens before like that's the ending Gotcha. Not, the, not the beginning like I had always seen that as the beginning oh, yeah. and then I realized oh wait that's the ending <laughs> yeah. oh so I wrote about the the the, the fear instead of yeah. about the you know the resolution and that's how the book finally came into being was realizing you know like this book has to be about you know what the fear the emotion going up to it so and then i had so many experiences of being so afraid over the years and i it never stopped me though i always wanted to perform because even when i couldn't put my finger on it i knew that once i started it was going to be great yeah you know, like once i got on stage and started especially when i was playing drums because the adrenaline was just flowing and I and I could forget everything and I could just play, you know? Yeah. It, you know, <laughs> and it would be fun, you know? Yeah, it's so it's so cool because I I do performances with my kindergarten through second graders and we do like one performance per grade level each year and the kids always going into that performance like when I talk to them like at our last rehearsal and I go how are you feeling and they go I'm nervous I'm scared I'm worried I'm you know it's all those things but when you ask them the next day after the performance how was it and they I, I get I get chills talking about this because they always say it was awesome it was wonderful it was great it felt so good you know they'll talk about I saw my parents or I saw my sister in the audience or they I loved it when they cheered or when I made them laugh or you know and it's that transition and, and I mean you're right and I love the power of setting it aside like I think for our writer friends who are tuning in, like that's a that's a powerful message just to set it aside and let it marinate because oftentimes we do that. Like we force what we think the story should be about. Like mm -hmm. I think like what's going to come next? I don't know what comes next. I can't write the story. I don't know what comes next. And then once you set it aside and you have some more experiences and then you can come back to that and go, oh, that's not the beginning. That's the ending of the story. What, what happens is what comes before that and how they overcome that. And I just think that's so good. And it's so universal and true, whether you're talking about a recital, like in your book um, for violin, or whether you're talking about a K2 
music program or whether you're talking about a kid doing their first karate tournament or whether you're talking about you know a kid showing their horse for the first time at the I mean like it transcends it, it's a musical connection for sure but then it just transcends beyond that to any time where we feel the spotlight on us for any reason whatsoever yeah yeah and we know if we can push past that what's on the other side is going to be something beautiful something wonderful something truly wild you know yeah. and it's yeah. also um empowering you know yeah. um i wanted that to be you know i didn't want to end the book with um one of the things that i, I felt important about was i didn't want to end the book with just like and then there was a performance and she's great i i wanted to end it with and then life goes on you yeah. didn't you know, then you go out and have pizza and then yeah. you, you know, and, and your dad gives you flowers and, 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 and you feel, um, empowered, you know, mm -hmm. you, you got through it and there's something about like facing that fear and walking through it, having it be, not only did you do it, but it was fun. Yeah. And now it's like becomes more of you like and you have that you have the empowerment inside of you um to maybe to do it again or yeah. to face something else yeah. you know and that was sort of what this last page was to me it was like this is her this is her empowerment you know like she's she's sort of glowing you know she she's got you know it's like her energy is expanded or something you know right yeah yeah you know and i i wanted that to also be part of the book it's like not just about feeling good that you did it you know she if anything like i didn't want to show like the audience cheering because she could have messed up but she still could feel that way right because you still got through it and right. you still you still face something that you were scared of and you still you can still own it you know even if it didn't go exactly the way you wanted it to you know yeah. so i like i i wanted to have that that moment of of joy that she's in this performance but not have it be like oh yay you you know like i didn't i wanted to leave out that you know anyway you understand what i'm saying not based on a perfect performance but just based on the fact that you faced the fear and you pushed through and you got yeah. to the other side of that and so yeah. because of that you know now you can do like you said something else or do it again because you yeah got it yeah the first time yeah right. and even if you make mistakes now you've even learned more you know like sometimes making mistakes is actually better maybe you know hopefully it doesn't discourage you from doing trying it again but um i don't know i've had plenty of i've had plenty of performances where i've dropped my sticks or i've forgotten the words or you know i've just in general done something really goofy and it hasn't stopped me because yeah. you you have to you know you just have to like learn how to let that stuff you know go by it and it and it's still it, it's the thing that it because when I was a kid it did stop me right it did stop me I I we I, we had a recital um I afterwards. It, I was in the orchestra. It wasn't even like I was like in my book where I'm just playing by myself. I was part of an orchestra and I was terrified. And afterwards, my dad said he was so, he was so proud. And he said I was the only one that was like swaying back and forth as I played. And I was mortified. I was mortified that I had done something that had stood out. Oh. That was what did it for me. I quit okay. after that. Wow. And and because I was so shy, I was so, so shy. It was absolutely mortifying to me that, that I had made that mistake. And, and I honestly think if I'd had a book like this to help me process mm -hmm. what had happened, if I had even had anyone even talk to me, or if I had even said anything, I was so shy to even say, tell, I don't remember ex telling my, my parents why I was so okay. devastated. 
Right. Um, but uh, I feel like if I'd had a book, it would have really, it would have really helped me process that. I, you know, so I, it's sort of a, was it a terribly traumatic incident? It just me, meant that I don't play violin, <laughs> which That's wasn't my chosen instrument anyway. And honestly, it was a good thing because um, my mom started playing viola after really? I quit. Really? How cool yeah. is that? And she and I and she and I both realized that she just wanted to play the whole time. Nice. Yeah, at first she was like, I want to play, so I'm gonna give my daughter lessons, you know, like yeah. And then when I when I couldn't go through with it, she was like, What am I doing? I'm the one that wants to play. I love that. I love she that. She went on to play for like 20 years, you know. So she played viola. That's amazing. And she started, you know, when she was like 50 or something, you know. Nice. So that's yeah, really inspiring. <laughs> for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. It inspired I, me. <laughs> I love what you said too about if you had had a book like this, because I think that's why we do what we do, right? Like we yeah. we we write these stories that impacted us in some way or that, you know, somehow um I mean typically it's something that even if it's in the here and now, it's something that impacted us. And then we just want to we want to share that or we want to help somebody through that that time. I had a, um, I was just telling Jen Fear, uh, Jasinski, we were talking yesterday <clears throat> about Stage Fright, an, another book for PB Jams, My Piano, um, and we were talking about Stage Fright, and I had a situation when I was in high school, and I was in the jazz band, and just before we went on, my music disappeared. Like it was on the stand on the side stage. It was like a talent show. So it was on the stand on the side stage. And when I went to get it to bring it out and come on stage, the music had disappeared. I had a solo for the song Heartlight from E.T. You know, those of you who are old like me, you'll remember. <laughs> so that song Heartlight from E.T. We were performing and I had the solo on trumpet. My music was gone. The solo wasn't on anybody else's music. And even though I had, I had, you talked about muscle memory. I mean, I had played that 1,599 times, I know, but that stage fright in the moment is so real. I totally forgot. the. I botched that solo so badly, but you know what? <laughs> I pushed through, right? I mean, you you, you have, as they say, yeah. the show must go on, right? You, you do the best you can. I remember just falling into tears after the performance, not during the performance, but as soon as we were done, you know, one of the guys um, came up and said, you did great. I was like, I did terrible. And I was just like bawling at that point. But, wow. um, but you know, you, you, you just push through and you, you know, next time you're going to have a backup copy of your music. I mean, you learn from that experience, right? And yeah, you say, well, yeah. shoot, it couldn't be any worse than that. So <laughs> yeah, you know, right. You right. made it through. Yeah. Through. Yeah. But that, that, through. and there's the joy of like for me, like the joy of, of the camaraderie yeah. of being in the band or being in a choir or you know, an orchestra. Um and just and having that performing, you know, that whole this is it's so worth it. It's so it's worth, worth it. all those the possibility of that happening you know right. yeah it really it's it's so rewarding it's, yeah I mean I didn't stop jazz band after that you know because you're right, right. You know, you're you're part of something bigger than that one moment in time right and, and you right. cherish that and you don't want to give that up yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. yeah awesome well talk to us a little bit from an author illustrator perspective about what it's like to go through that process of the book like did the words come first did the we know your little sketches came first so right. did you go ahead and flesh those out and then write the story did the story come first how did that work um well yeah, the definitely the sketches came first, um, but then they sat there for a long time and I almost forgot about them. Mm -hmm. um, I often when I'm figuring out a story, I, I start I weirdly I start with words. Okay. I start writing things out first. Um, 
when I get stuck on something, often I'll switch over to drawing because drawing, especially with characters, um, the characters will start sort of informing you somehow. <laughs> like, like I'll just draw them in a situation that I hadn't really thought of. It's sort of like a stream of consciousness where I'm just sort of doodling. So mm -hmm. often that will, um, that can help um, sort of uh, get, get over bumps in where I'm when I'm trying to do the story for for something wild though I think something wild happened to be a couple of times I've had the experience where I, I I'm I can't sleep like I I have an idea and I can't and I I lie in bed and I and the, and the whole thing starts to come to me as I'm in that sort of twilight where uh, where I, so a, a lot of the book and a lot of the idea came to me. I had started writing down like, um, um, like what ifs. I, someone had given me an example of like, what if this and what if that? And, and I had, I can't remember exactly what I wrote down. I should have had it, but I wrote down like, you know, something that sort of triggered, I, I was, I was really nervous about this talk. And so I knew that I wanted to write, I knew I, that a good thing to do would be to channel some of this anxiety that I was feeling right. about this upcoming talk that I had to do. And I was writing down what ifs and stuff. And I sort of just put that aside. And then in, at night or early in the morning, it came to me like, oh, you know, cause I, I was thinking, how can I, um, translate what I'm feeling now into something a kid would experience, mm -hmm. right, right? right? So you take what you're going through and you think, what is the kid version of, what's the kid version of this? Yeah. And so I thought, oh, a recital, a recital is a kid version of this. Like they would have to, maybe are nervous about a recital coming up. And I literally got to the point of like, okay, they're gonna be, maybe there's a recital coming up. And then all of a sudden I was like, wait, I have those pictures. Yeah, it, it was weird. It was like, I got the idea separate from the pictures. Mm -hmm. And so I went running and I looked at the portfolio and I was like, Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, this is the ending. It's the ending. So it was it was for something wild. It kind of came in weird little pieces like that. And but it was very organically, it sounds like, which is kind of cool. Yeah, it was very, very organically. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it was, I was really trying to manage the anxiety mm -hmm. and it went, and that's how the book, really how the book came together. Cause I was really losing sleep over, over this whole thing. Yeah. And I, I, it, and, and, and it was interesting because when I finally did it, it was great. <laughs> it was just like, you know, like it was, it was fine. It was. I, you know, but I had prepared all this stuff. It was ridiculous. I had so much more stuff than I needed for this little tiny presentation. <laughs> but um, anyway, so, it, so yeah, it came together. Um, yeah, it, it, uh, yeah, so I, it sort of started with, but then again, then I started to really write things down. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't really have an, an early, See, like this is this is very typical of of you know how I start. I put together this little book. I do a whole lot of drawings in my notebook, and then I start to put things down, and I start experimenting with words, and you know, I just sort of, you know, at the beginning there were bears. Oh, funny. In the room, you know, so. I'm experimenting with different words and exp she has a different name in this version. Interesting. Um, you know, she's, I, I, you know, like I, the words and the pictures that are develop at the same time, once I have the idea and I usually have the idea, like all at once, like all at once I get like, oh, this is how it's going to start. And this is how it's going to end. And then I have to like figure out the middle. <laughs> yeah. The messy middle. Oh, yes. Yes. yeah. It's a so, love hate relationship with the messy middle. Yeah. Sure. yeah. 
I, yeah. I love how the word wild kind of transitions in the story. So in the beginning of the story, she is hoping for something wild that'll just take her out of this whole recital thing and she doesn't uh-huh. even have to do it. And then you flip that at the end. Um, did that, how did that idea come? I mean, we, we, we've said it kind of developed, did that develop organically as well throughout the process? Yeah. I mean, um, I, yeah, it did. I mean, I, I thought of the phrase something wild, which has been, you know, used in other, for a movie and things. And I, for a long time, I actually tried to figure out a different word than wild because I didn't, um, I thought it could be something amazing or something, but like nothing else had that sort of that duality. Nice, yeah. Yeah. You know, the duality. I liked the duality of wild. So yeah. um, I just had to keep it at, at one point it was called something wild happened um, or, you know, and then that didn't work either. So, you know, so I just ended up with, it was one of the first, the, one of the, the phrases that came to me in the middle of the night when I couldn't sleep and I was trying to work out the story. Gotcha. Was, where I was like, oh, something wild. She wants it, you know, and oh, oh. And I was sort of like getting that idea. It sort of just came, I, I don't know where it came from. Honestly. Yeah, yeah. Like all good idea, good ideas, it just <laughs> comes from the universe and, and the universe. I don't know <laughs> sort of yeah. a dream state ish yeah. sometimes that's really a good time to think about um, is. ideas is like when you're falling asleep or when you're first waking up well because- I think our subconscious has all these ideas that we have all these blocks or you know just we're just in a freer state I think at those yeah times for those ideas to surface yeah yeah, yeah. those really good ideas that are hiding while we're resting or while right. we're working and sometimes when I, um, I'll sometimes uh, watch TV at night and I'll have my sketchbook with me um, and I'll just be doodling and drawing while I'm watching a movie. And I, and uh, often the, the slight distraction of the television is, does sort of the weirdly the same thing yeah, where I'm not really that. thinking very much about what I'm drawing. And I've come up with some, you know, interesting characters or, or, um, I think that's how I came up with the with the stray. Um, my idea for the stray was from a, a doodle that I had done of a family that is comes across a crashed UFO, um, you know, <laughs> just Love on that. their little daily walk, you know. Um, and I, I'm sure that was just a little doodle I did in my sketchbook um, while watching some probably science fiction movie or something. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Well, that's a perfect segue into talking to us about what's coming next for you. Do you have other books coming down the pipeline? Do you have something exciting that you're working on? What's well, um, yes, yes, and yes. yes okay. Yes. Yay. <laughs> um, I have, I'm just finishing the artwork for The Yowlers, which is, you can see on the wall back there. That's my next book. Um, that's, um, I just completed all the interior art. There's no cover yet, so I can't show you any, there's no, been no cover. There's nothing to reveal, <laughs> but, um, it's, on. Uh, I didn't write it. It's written by Stacy Lynn Carroll. Okay. Um, and it's, uh, it's with also with Nancy Paulson. Okay. And, um, and that's, I'm really, um, I really had so much fun with this book. It was just so fun because the characters are just really hilarious characters and there's a lot of humor visual humor um which is another thing i I love doing um yeah and um so that's and that's going to come out uh fall of 24. okay something wild and this one got pushed a year because of the pandemic this was something wild originally was slated for 22 and it got pushed to um spring 23 and this one is the same way it was has been pushed to fall 20 uh 24 gotcha. which is fine because i had more time to work on it yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so um so that's really exciting and then i have another book um with uh with an imprint called minerva um 
and that one is i'm not sure it's it's being pushed um i I don't know. I can't really. I'm not at a li really liberty to talk about it at all because it's right at the stages. Yep. Yep. But that one will be my next project, and I'm really excited about that one. That's so. As soon as I finish Yowlers, I'm gonna jump on that one. Um, and then you know, I have, um, I have some ideas. I have a some other ideas. I have another book dummy that I've been working on. Um, that I'm gonna put out there soon, um, shop around pretty soon. And, uh, you know, my daughter um, is pregnant with twins. Wow, twins. With twins, and I am a twin. Okay. Um, <laughs> so now I'm inspired to do something with that. <laughs> Yes, more story ideas. More story ideas. Yeah. So I think it would be um, really fun to explore that as um, I'm really, really looking forward to having her twins come into the world because I grew up as a twin um, and now I get to see it from the other side. Yeah. Um, and uh, that I'm really looking forward to. And um, Looking and looking forward to being able to work with with the experience of twin of raising twin being a twin raising a twin twins um, is a unique I think experience yeah I'm sure and so um, anyway that's my current thought but who knows if it'll go anywhere for it could be a while <laughs> before that comes goes anywhere yeah so I have lots of you know. Lots of ideas. Lots of ideas. Yeah. Yeah. That is so cool. It has been such fun chatting with you about something wild. And to all of our listeners and viewers, if you have not looked and read something wild, then you absolutely need to do that. So, um, you know, I always encourage you to support our authors and our author illustrators like Molly. So go put in a request at your library or your local bookstore. Uh, make sure you leave reviews if you read it and love it. And I know you will. Um, when you read it and love it, go to Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Goodreads, and leave those excellent reviews for her. Um, but even if you don't have the money to spend, you can check it out from the library. Put in those requests. Shout it out on social media. Um, let people know what a great book it is. And for those of you who are um, having kids that are performing in any way, shape, or form, like you really need this book. It's a fabulous book to talk with them about how that stage fright can interfere, but how you can overcome it. And then you can become an even better performer and push yourself to do great, fabulous, wonderful things. Music teachers, you need this book. Uh, everybody just needs the book. So just go get the book and enjoy it and have fun with it and give her all the great reviews and kudos. And um, thank you for being here. And thank you, Molly, for being here with us today. It's been a blast. Thank you so much. It's really, really has been wonderful talking to you. And thank you so much. I, I really, I really appreciate you and everything you're doing for to help to support this community. Thank you. Right. Listen, I love it. I love highlighting fabulous books, especially ones with musical connections, because that's what it's all about here on PB Jam. So we'll see you next time. Okay. Bye. Bye. PB Jam.